This book follows Hallie. This book Hallie hollows. Oh my god. Everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my May wrap up for 2021 part 4. I read a total of 25 books this month so I split it up into 5 parts. If you are interested in seeing the other books that I read this month I will leave the links down below to the other videos when they are uploaded so without further ado let us get started. <sighs> The first book that I'm going to talk about is Now Entering Adamsville by Francesca Zappia. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this book follows Zora Novak, who is not very well liked in her small town of Adamsville. She has been trying to keep out of trouble since her father was arrested and she had been accused of starting a fire that made her lose two of her fingers. Zora has the unique ability to see ghosts and just like her mother who disappeared four years ago, she has made it her mission to to hunt and kill fire starters. So when a fire is started and it kills the school janitor, everyone's fingers point to Zora as being responsible. So with the help from her cousin Artemis, she is working to clear her name and kill the fire starter that is responsible. And it's like the story of that. So I found this book to be very average, which is why I only gave it a three out of five stars. I didn't really care about Zora or the story that was unfolding. I found the world building to be a little bit confusing and the history behind the fire starters and how they came to be and why they were starting all these fires very confusing like it was never really explained to us there was also a lot of side characters that we were supposed to keep track of and know who they were but they had very little time on page so it was very confusing to try to keep track of everybody I was also able to call the big twist that happened pretty early on so that was very disappointing so yeah it was just like a very average read for me I didn't really care so three out of five stars the next book i have is siege and storm by lee bardugo i gave this a four out of five stars i'm not gonna really talk a lot about it because i have a whole reading vlog up on me reading this book so if you're interested to see my full thoughts then go check out that video but pretty much all i have to say is that i am complete trash for nikolai and i love him with my whole heart and if you want to know more then go watch that video. Next up, I have What I Like About You by Marissa Cantor. I give this a three out of five stars. It was another pretty average read for me. This book follows Hallie Lovett, who is an up-and-coming online persona, which she is known for her bookish cupcakes. Online, she goes by Kels Roth or One True Pastry. She is planning to meet her online best friend, Nash Stevens, this year at BookCon. So when she unexpectedly meets him at a public library after moving in with her gramps, she does not tell him her true identity. She doesn't want to ruin their perfect on a line relationship, but now it seems that Nash is everywhere that she goes and she can't stop her growing feelings for him. So as they grow closer and their feelings for each other grow stronger, she needs to decide when is the right time to tell him her true identity, but she never seems to find that time and it's like the story of that. So like I said, this was a pretty average romance, but the lack of communication between these two characters just drove me crazy. I have said many times I'm not a big fan of the miscommunication trope, so I don't really know why I thought that a whole book focusing around that trope was going to be for me, but I was also sent this unsolicited, so I don't really feel as bad. I just don't really understand why Hallie didn't tell Nash right from their first meeting who she was. Like, I personally would be very excited if I met my online best friend randomly in person. Like, I would be squealing, but... I digress. I didn't really like Hallie that much either. I found her very self-centered, but I did like Nash a lot more than Hallie, so he kind of saved the story for me, honestly. But I mostly just felt bad for him and how poorly Hallie treated him. But I did really enjoy the book blogging aspect of this since I am part of that community. It was really interesting to see it represented in a book. I also think that the book was pretty lengthy for what it was. I think that a lot of the scenes that took place could have been easily cut down and we would have gotten the exact same story. But yeah, overall it was just like average. It was meh. I didn't really care. So three out of five stars. Next up, we have Better Again by Christina Riccio, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars, which was a generous 3 out of 5 stars, but it follows Jamie, who is an 
aspiring comedian who struggles with stage anxiety, and Siri, who is a very talented ballerina who just suffered a career-ending injury. When they meet each other unexpectedly at a Rediscover Yourself retreat, they find out that they are actually sisters. They were separated from each other by their parents after their very nasty divorce. Jamie has been living with their father and Siri has been living with their mother miles apart from each other and so they decide that they are going to confront their respective parents by switching places. Their plan ends up being derailed when they are glitter bombed and they find themselves in each other's shoes literally, and it's like the story of that. So this has been advertised as like Freaky Friday meets Parent Trap, which yes, it is basically that. I do think that this book was a very cute story, but the dialogue between these characters was so irritating, I could not get into the story which was really disappointing because it is a cute concept. This specifically applies to Siri and her switching of curse words to like censored versions. Like she would say shit, but she would say excrement instead. For the first half of the book, I really did not like Siri. She definitely did grow on me in the end. And Jamie was definitely the more likable sister, but honestly not that much more likable. She was very selfish and kind of an asshole, which was mentioned probably 60,000 times so that we really got the fact that she was an asshole. But I did really like Dawn, who is Jamie's best friend. I think that she deserves so much better than both of the sisters, but that's besides the point. I also think that this is a pretty lengthy book, just like the last book I talked about. It could have been cut down a lot and still got the same story across because most of the time we were getting the same scene from the other sister's point of view, which I get what was trying to be done, but it was unnecessary. I listened to this on audiobook and I think that that is what gave it the three stars for me because I think that the narrator did do a good job for what this book was, but I think that if I had read it physically I would not have ended up giving it a three out of five stars, so I don't know. It was kind of disappointing because I thought that it was going to be a lot better than it was. And then the last book I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Baby and Solo. This is by Elizabeth Postuma, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. It follows Joel, who is 17 years old. He was just released from a mental hospital. The doctor has suggested that he should get a part-time job to live life more like a normal teenager. So he ends up getting a job at Royal Videos, which is basically just a blockbuster. And that is where he meets Nicole, who goes by Baby. Everybody in the Storg has a nickname, so Joel is deemed Solo. They strike up an unlikely friendship, and as they grow closer, Joel tries harder and harder to keep his past a secret and keep living his new normal life, and it's like the story of that. So like I said, I did not expect to like this as much as I did. I had very low expectations going into it, but I was pleasantly surprised. I really liked Joel and Baby as characters. Joel is really sarcastic, and his character had me laughing a lot with his telling of his story. I also really liked Baby. I think that she is a very complex character. She was very moody and a little bit bitter, but it was understandable for what she was going through in the story. But she could also be very lovable and a really good friend, so I just really thought she was a great character. I also really liked all of the side characters in this book. The video store employees were all just so unique and had their own interesting personalities and you wanted to know more about all of them. I also really liked how we were never really told what the bad thing that happened to Solo was at the very beginning. As the story progresses and he tells his story more, we get little tidbits of what the bad thing might be, but we're never flat out told until around the ending of the book. This dove a lot deeper into some pretty serious topics that I wasn't exactly expecting. Like there's a big focus on suicidal ideation and mental health, which I thought there would be a little bit, but like I said, it dove a lot deeper. But it was done in a very humorous way, but also a very sensitive way at the same time that I really appreciated. I listened to this on audiobook from NetGalley and it was missing chunks of certain chapters which I had a physical copy as well so it didn't really matter for me but the chunks that were missing were very important chapters. Like chapter 11, something is revealed that basically throws off the entire story if you don't have 
the physical copy to go along with it so I mean it doesn't really affect people who have the physical copy or buy the audiobook or get the audiobook from the library but it kind of threw me off because it literally just like abruptly stopped in the middle of a chapter and I was like what? So I had to go to the physical copy and find and read the rest of it but from what was available on the audiobook that I listened to I think that the narrator did a really great job as Joel and I was fully invested in his story and portrayal of the character so yeah I gave it four out of five stars. I actually really recommend this book because it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Alright everybody, so that was my part four of five for my May wrap-up for 2021. If you are interested in the other books, like I said, I will leave those down below for you to check out. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!